Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing books. Ah! What was that? Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be continuing my 2016 wrap up with books 50. 51 through 55? Possibly? I don't know. I've given up. The next five books that I read in 2016. So the first book in this video is going to be The Dragon's Blades, The Reborn King by Michael R. Miller. This is an adult high fantasy book that was sent to me by the author in exchange for an honest review, and I have since posted my review, so if you'd like to check that out, I will link it in the card symbol and down below, and you can check that out because I really did enjoy this novel. I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. It's about a, a dragon named Darnuir, and the dragons in this world have lost their dragon form and so they pretty much look like humans they're just stronger and faster than humans are and he ends up having to go through this spell that turns him back into a baby and he's raised among humans so he has to deal with all of those different things and if you'd like to learn more about the book just go and check out my review so I don't talk your ear off about it right here. The next thing I read is going to be One Piece Volume 3, which is called Don't Get Fooled Again. This series is about a boy named Monkey D. Luffy, and he has eaten the gum gum fruit, which basically means that he has elastic skin and can stretch his arms out really far. He has an elastic body. But the catch is that he cannot swim, and so that causes a little bit of problems for him because he wants to become a pirate. And so in this volume, you follow him trying to recruit a few more members to his pirate crew and I really did enjoy it I ended up giving it four stars out of five stars because I didn't really like the people that he was trying to recruit I thought they were kind of annoying but I did enjoy the story and I think that it is going to continue to be awesome as it goes through all jillion volumes of it if you're curious about the artwork this is kind of what the the normal artwork looks like there's some pages that have better shading and like more gray tones in the background but mostly they look like that and so I've really been enjoying them I'll definitely be continuing along with the series whenever I end up picking up more volumes I'm kind of coming over my manga hype phase so I'm gonna be buying less manga in the future but I'll definitely be continuing with the series whenever I find the next volumes for cheap the next book that I read is going to be Chasing Forgiveness by Neil Shusterman this is a young adult I guess technically it'd be contemporary but I don't really read contemporary I classify this as fiction but it's young adult so it's it's contemporary but I don't like to say that. I'm just gonna read the blurb of the story because the book's not very long so I don't want to say too much without spoiling it and I usually never do that because I feel like the blurbs are really long but it does a very good job of portraying what's actually inside the book. I love my father, I do. I love him so much it kills me but I hate him more than anything in the world. How can anyone feel both at the same time and still be in one piece? Preston Scott was only 12 years old when his father killed his mother. He never saw it coming. Despite his parents constant fighting, Preston always thought they were perfect together. Who could ever predict something like this? Fast forward. Preston is now 14. His father has just been released from jail and is moving near his grandparents' house where Preston and his younger brother Tyler have been living. His grandparents forgave his dad long ago for killing their daughter and although Preston tries to feel the same kind of forgiveness, it's not easy. He'll never see his mother again and yet he still loves his father. How is that possible? Will Preston ever be able to reconcile his dueling feelings for his father and move past this tragedy? New York Times bestselling Neil Schusterman, etc, etc. I really did like this novel. I ended up giving it 3.75 stars, which is another weird rating. I don't know what is up with my ratings this time, but it was better than 3.5 stars for me, but not quite enough to get that four star rating because I really wanted more from the novel. I think it's much too short. I, this is a true story, which I just thought was crazy that this happened in real life because these people are incredible. Their capacity for love and forgiveness is such an inspiration because I don't think I could do it. I have like a hard time forgiving people if they really wronged me and if someone killed my mom if my dad killed my mom I do not think I could ever in my entire life forgive him for that so it's so crazy that, that this is also real life because I've seen people's reviews of this book that know the people that the book is about and so it's just it just blows my mind but I did want to have a little bit more of the story I feel like some things are kind of brushed over they're kind of mentioned and then they keep moving and I wanted more out of it. I think it could have impacted me a lot more if they spent more time on each of the issues that Preston is going through throughout the novel. I think that that could have been fleshed out a little bit more. And so I ended up giving it 3.75 stars, but I think I'm gonna be rereading it in the future. I don't know, I feel like these type of novels that I've been reading recently, Inside the O'Briens, Chasing Forgiveness, Challenger Deep, those kinds of novels are, are, have just such a high rereadability. I think it's awesome. And so I'm definitely going to be rereading this in the future and, and maybe I'll end up giving it a higher rating when I reread it. But for now, it's gonna be 3.75 stars. I recommend this book though still. The next book I read is 
Calamity by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Reckoners trilogy. So it wrapped up everything in the story, although there is going to be a spin-off series that is based off of this series. It's called, I forgot what it's called, but there is a spin-off series and I will be reading it. If you guys don't know, this follows a boy named David and at the beginning of the first book, he witnesses his father being murdered by what's called an epic. And epics in this world are these people that have developed superpowers and anyone with superpowers ends up becoming evil. And so the epics are kind of anti-superheroes. David wants revenge for his father's death and so he goes and tries to join this rebel group called the Reckoners and he wants to kill Steelheart who is the person that killed his father. I love the series. I gave the first one four and a half stars maybe, gave the second one four stars and I ended up giving this one three stars. I was a bit disappointed with it. I thought that the beginning was so repetitive. The characters just say the same things over and over and over again and I thought that we could have moved along a lot faster than it did and I also think that the ending of the whole series was not satisfying. I was just kind of like, what are you talking about? I heard Lindsay describe it like this and I, I totally agree that this is the first Brandon Sanderson ending that I've ever read that didn't make 100% sense. It was just kind of like an explanation, but no explanation, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but he says the reasons for why things happen, and then it doesn't really make sense because it just makes you have more questions and it's still confusing a little bit. So, I ended up giving it three stars. I liked it, but it was definitely not my favorite Brandon Sanderson novel. I think this is actually the lowest I've ever rated a Brandon Sanderson novel, so sadness. <laughs> and the last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be Thor's Serpents, which is the third and final book in the Blackwell Pages trilogy by K.L. Armstrong and M.A. Marr. This series follows a bunch of descendants of the Norse gods who have died many, many years ago, but one person from each descendancy has gotten the powers of their ancestors and they have to relive the myths of the Norse gods. One of my favorite things about this series is that although they are reliving all of these myths within those myths they can change things and they can decide their own fates to a point although they have to keep somewhat close to the myths but they can like wait they have some wiggle room which I really liked and I really liked seeing those twists on the myths I did a review for the first book so I'll leave that up in the card symbol and you can check that out but I really liked it I ended up giving it 4.5 stars and I gave the second one four stars and I gave this one three stars. I feel like there's a trend there. I think why I ended up giving this book three stars was the things that I didn't really appreciate in the first couple of books. The problems that I had were just kind of compounded into this book. They just kept going and so they started annoying me a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. I think one of the main things was that all the characters reset. It's very episodic. So each character resets and they have to deal with the same flaws that they have over and over and over again. And this is one of the main characters. His name is Matt. He is the descendant of Thor and he is very self conscious and he feels like the black sheep in his family and he has to deal with that all over again in each book and he has to overcome it in each book and so I just didn't like that I thought that these characters didn't really grow and stay grown it was like they took one step forward and then one and a half steps back or even two steps back it was like they were fighting a losing battle and it was kind of frustrating in that respect. In the first book, I know one of my complaints was that it felt like two different writers writing. In the second book, I thought it improved a lot, but then in this third book, it ended up being two different writers again, so I wasn't really sure why that was happening. But I do like the series, and I do like this novel, but I, it, it's not my favorite in the series, so I ended up giving it three stars when it compares to the other two. So those are the next five books that I read in 2016. I know the last couple of wrap-ups have been a little bit negative, but there were some gems in there. Let me know down in the comments what you've been reading recently. If you you know any Norse mythology type stories because those have been really interesting me recently let me know those down in the comments and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time bye